Good evening, beloved, and welcome to our Wednesday meditation service. I'm Pastor Rachel here, and it is a joy to be with you this evening as we contemplate and consider the Ten Commandments here this evening. But before we delve into the Exodus, I want us to begin with a blessing by Jan Richardson from her book of blessings. It's called Beloved is Where We Begin. If you would enter into the wilderness, do not begin without a blessing. Do not leave without hearing who you are. Beloved, named by the one who has traveled this path before you. Do not go without letting it echo in your ears. And if you find it is hard to let it into your heart, do not despair. That is what the journey is for. I cannot promise this blessing will free you from danger and fear, from hunger and thirst, from the scorching of the sun or the fall of the night. But I can tell you that on this path there will be help. I can tell you that on this way there will be rest. I can tell you that you will know the strange graces that come to our aid only on a road such as this, that fly to meet us bearing comfort and strength, that come alongside us for no other cause than to lean themselves toward our ear and with their curious insistence, whisper our name, beloved, beloved, beloved. Our scripture passage for this evening comes from Exodus chapter 20, verses 1 through 17. Then God spoke these words. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of slavery, out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol, whether in the form of anything that is in heaven above or that is on the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or worship them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing children for iniquity of parents to the third and fourth generation of those who reject me, but showing steadfast love to the thousandth generation of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not acquit anyone who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to you and to the Lord your God. You shall not do any work, you, your son or your daughter, your male or your female slave, your livestock, or the alien resident in your town. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, but this rested the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and consecrated it. Honor your father and mother so that your days may be long in the land that the Lord is giving you. You shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife or male or female slave or ox or donkey or anything that belongs to your neighbor. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I've been thinking a lot about what John shared with us on Sunday, about our bodies being holy temples. It has brought up the question, how am I tending to my body physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually? Or perhaps another way to ask this question is, how am I loving the Lord with all my heart, soul, mind, and strength? I think it is especially necessary for us to be checking in with our precious bodies this week as we near the one year anniversary of the pandemic causing everything to shut down, of scrambling to find certain items at grocery stores, 
of finding masks that suddenly must always be worn when you're outside your home. So maybe you're finding yourself in a different place this week as you remember how it all began for you. Perhaps you find yourself more exhausted than usual. Perhaps you're experiencing more stress. Or maybe you're just very aware that you're on edge. Trauma does this to our bodies. It reminds us of where we've been and what we've been through. In the book of Exodus, we have a people who have only ever known a life of slavery that are brought out into freedom. You cannot simply flip a switch and suddenly go from experiencing a life of trauma to a life of freedom. Sometimes I think we tend to be too hard on these newly freed Israelites when they start making mistakes, like hoarding manna when they're told not to, or building the golden calf, or continually, continually wailing about wanting to go back to Egypt. We forget that these are people who have no concept of what freedom looks like nor what it means to trust in this one God. They have just come out of a time of trauma and who knows what they are dealing with mentally, emotionally, and physically. This is what first sparked my interest in mental health and scripture, specifically the Exodus here. We have a people who are likely experiencing an array of mental health challenges from anxiety to depression to PTSD. So what is God's response then to this group of people who are undergoing so many mental health challenges? Community, bringing people together. God binds this community together through commandments regarding how to live with God and with one another. It tells us that in response to trauma and mental health challenges, what we should not be doing is isolating, but instead be turning toward God and one another. God recognizes the struggles of the Israelites, recognizes their trauma and knows that they need rules to hold them together as a community. Not just any rules, but commandments that bind them to God and one another. Commandments that instruct them in how to rest in God and trust in each other. This had me wondering, what would the Ten Commandments sound like today amid what we are going through? What words of hope might we need to hear during this particular season of life? I decided to do some creative rewriting of these commandments as an exercise in listening to what God might have to say to us and allow us to hear these commandments with new insight and understanding. My beloved children, I have loved you with so great of a love that I bring people out of oppression so that they might experience freedom. Because of my love for you, do not turn to idols. You know what your idols are, be it maintaining a certain lifestyle, trying to always be perfect, believing that you will receive unconditional love from others and only conditional love from me. No, beloved, you have it mixed up. You will receive conditional love from humans because you have fallen into sin. I I am the one who will give you unconditional love and grace. So trust in this promise throughout all your generations. My name is a holy name and is not meant to be tossed about without care. Do not use my name to further your own agenda, nor use it as a tool of judgment or oppression of others. My name is Wonderful Counselor. Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. I know you well, my beloved children. You work yourselves to death physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. 
come take aside some time come take time to set aside those habits that pull you away from me rest in me my first act when i finished creation was to rest and delight in creation surely you can grant me time to simply delight in you yes Honor those who have raised you and trust in their love. Be careful because at times you will think you know more and are better than them. Trust me when I tell you, you need the wisdom of others to help you grow and flourish. So shed that coat of pride and wrap yourself in the blanket of humility. Treat your siblings in Christ with patience and grace. Show restraint and set healthy boundaries. Trust me, it will help you to love others more. Be full of charity for others and remember that everything you have is a gift from me, so give freely to others. Kindness to others is compassion in action. You are a blessing, just as your neighbor is also a blessing. The one you live beside, the ones you love, the ones you don't yet know, and the ones you struggle to love. Be grateful for the blessings I have given you and the ones that I have given to your neighbors. Your life is a precious gift. So give thanks with a grateful heart. Amen. Beloved, let us join together now in our prayers for this evening. Holy God, you have called us to live before you and with one another in all faithfulness. Unable to live as you intend, we inflict harm and hurt on others and on ourselves as well. In all these ways, we know we grieve your heart also. Hear then our prayers of intercession. Restore us to communion with you and one another that we might live in the freedom you have bestowed. We pray for people who are victims of crime, from petty theft to murder. We pray that those harmed will find healing and will dwell in safety. Hold especially close to your heart, O God, those who have lost a loved one to violence, and help us to offer tenderness and care in their struggles and grief. We pray also for those who have committed crimes, that they may seek and find forgiveness and begin a new life of responsibility and integrity before you and in the community. We pray for healing and reconciliation where trust has been broken, hostility has flared, or misunderstanding has grown. Restore us not only to one another, but reconcile us to ourselves and to you, loving God. If restoration proves beyond hope, then grant new beginnings and possibilities for all. In every relationship, we seek your grace as we honor others by caring for them, being truthful, and working for their welfare. Root out in us any jealousy toward what others possess and let generosity grow in and among us instead. Gracious God, we pray for those who are ill in mind, body, or spirit, for those lonely and isolated from community, for those burdened by guilt or grief, by depression or despair. Do not let us turn inward as a church, lest we shut out or neglect those who long for a community of welcome and companionship. Send us out in love with open eyes, ears, and hearts. Make us true neighbors to one another and true children of your own calling. We pray in the name of Christ, who has come to set us free. Amen. Beloved, I hope that you will go forth in all care and tenderness 
treating yourselves and your neighbors with grateful hearts that are overflowing and gratitude to God and all that God has given to us. In his precious and holy name, amen.